Hey everyone, this is Shannon with the Also Archives. This is my first vlog video while at work in patient transport. Today I'm at Washington Hospital Center and we're picking up a patient from the hospital and taking them back home. And um, this is probably gonna be the routine for the whole eight hour shift because this shift is strictly dedicated to um, the Washington Hospital Center client. So we'll be taking a lot of people back home or maybe some hospital to hospital or hospital to nursing home transport. Uh, but this is only eight hour shift. Normally I work 12 hours a day. So this will be a very nice and um, it should feel really short compared to my normal shifts. So I'll keep you posted as the day goes on and we'll see how it goes. So our first call uh, today was canceled. The patient decided to stay in the hospital for a couple more days just because the home does not have a hospital bed at this time and they prefer to go home with the hospital bed uh, for better accommodations. So they're gonna stay at the hospital for a couple more days. Um, right now, we're still at Washington Hospital Center waiting for the next call, which is in about two hours. So let's hope we don't get another call in between time. Um, and then that'll allow us just to sit here and chill out for a bit until we go in for our next pickup. Hi everyone, another day at work. Today is a Saturday. So typically Saturdays we have uh, a, sh a little bit of a lighter schedule, but it really just depends on the movement at the different hospitals and facilities that we transport to and from. Uh, it looks like our first patient of the day, our first transport is gonna be a COVID positive patient. So those we have to gown up completely with the N95 mask and double mask, double gloves and the gowns. I have my, um, my hair bonnet on today just to protect because I knew I was working with an advanced life support uh, unit, which is a paramedic unit. So we tend to get the more um, high acuity patients. So I wanted to make sure I was fully protected from head to toe. So I plan on doing another video talking about clinical experiences in general and options I think for pre-meds that are great to get exposed to the healthcare field, to work with different healthcare providers and across healthcare facilities in general. But just to give a little snippet here, um, I'm an EMT, a certified EMT in, in Maryland, but I also have my national registry certification as well. So once I got my EMT, I started volunteering at my local fire department, but I also I found this job in patient transport. And for any pre-meds out there, I think that getting your EMT is one of the best things you can do. It really opens a lot of doors to getting close clinical exposure and patient interaction time. And especially with patient transport, you get to see a lot of what the home situations are like for patients. So you get to see the before and after um, of the patient and what their, you know, what more of their life is like a bigger picture outside of the clinical setting. So oftentimes we pick people up from home and then we take them to the hospital in the volunteer setting at the volunteer EMS station. But then here at transport, we take people from the hospital and take them back home. So it's almost as if you get the full circle picture of what it's like to bring people in and then take people back home. Um, so I think that's, that experience has been really valuable for me as a pre-med and I think it'll, it'll serve me well as a future physician being able to really keep an open mind when I'm dealing with patients and the backgrounds that they may be coming from. Hey again, we're at Fort Washington Hospital and we're getting ready to pick up our second patient of the day. This is a, it's a patient we have to carry up the steps. So we use what's called a stair chair and that will allow us to carry the back of the chair and then the bottom part of the chair with these little handles. And then we literally have to physically carry them up the steps. Luckily it's only about eight steps, but I've had patients that we've had to carry up 20 steps that live on the fourth floor of an apartment building or things like that. 
So it's definitely not easy. Um, I think the largest patient I've had to carry has been about 350. But of course, at that, those patients, we have four people. So we switch out um, when one of us gets tired. But also, unfortunately for us, um, we don't have automatic stretchers. So um, we have to do all the lifting of the patients ourselves. So everything's manual. So, so if you're interested in doing patient transport, you should try to find an ambulance company that, that has the automatic loading stretchers. So sorry for the poor lighting and the blue glare in my glasses, but as you can see, it's now nighttime. This is a 2 p.m. to 2 a.m. shift. So we're almost halfway there, um, but we're just stopping for lunch. I got my cereal for dinner and my partner just went to Chick-fil-A. So we're waiting outside Chick-fil-A and we'll see whatever calls we get next. But um, I hope to do another video where I share more cases of patients that we get on calls. Uh, so whenever I get interesting ones, I'll write them down and keep a log and hopefully record another video with, with more cases that I've described. But thank you for watching this one and I'll see you on the next video.